This massive unit is the Afferi 2000 watt portable power station. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, before we get started, a few things I want to mention. First, I want to thank Afferi for sending me the 2000 watt portable power station so that I can share it with you. Now, 2000 watt portable power station. I guess it's portable, it has handles on top, it's not fixed to anything permanently, but this is a heavy unit. So portable, yes, it might be portable, but it's not something you're going to take and move around a lot. In fact, that's how I wanted to frame this video and this unit. This is the largest power station that I have reviewed to date. And it's outside of the norm for me in that most of the power, actually all the power stations that I have previously reviewed have been ones that I've been willing to take car camping, certainly not backpacking, but car camping, um, maybe Maybe taken to a cottage or something like that. Not that I have a cottage. Not so much this one. This is in a different category for a couple of reasons. I suppose if I had a cottage, I would take this unit. If I had a large RV, I would take this unit. But certainly not car camping. It's, it just displaces too many things that I won't be able to take with me in my car if I was to do that. However, where this power station fits, at least for me, is certainly preparedness for emergencies here at home. And that's the way I see it. This is the first unit that I can actually count on to run my furnace. I have a forced hot air, oil-fired forced hot air furnace. It doesn't take a whole lot of power to run it, but it does take more wattage than any of the units that I have previously uh, reviewed on this channel. This one will do it. The other thing that this will do is run larger appliances than just things like coffee makers. This will run a coffee maker the other ones, now usually they don't. They don't have quite enough wattage. Coffee bakers actually do consume a lot of power. This will run my microwave. I found that kind of interesting. Now, I don't consider the microwave something I have to have available to me during an emergency, a, a grid down or power failure emergency. Coffee maker, I have alternate ways. It's just nice to be able to count on your coffee maker. But those two items aside, being able to run large appliances like my fridge or freezer, no problem at all with this, with a lot of capacity in this battery to run them for a longer period of time. 2,000 watts, actually 1,997 watts, is enough to run this for, run a fridge or a freezer for quite a long time. Running my furnace, this is the first one. Now, I still am in the market for a gas powered generator, something that I can count on to run that and recharge units like this. But where the gas generator cannot be operated inside of your house, this one can. That's what's really nice about it. You don't have to go out into the weather to start the generator up in order to get your furnace running again. Okay, so I think that's enough of positioning for this unit. Let's get into a little bit of detail. So right off of the top, because of the size of this, I will not be lifting it up into the air to show you, but I do want to start out by sharing with you what came with it. And uh, we'll start with the manual, of course, the operating manual and warranty information inside of this booklet. A little accessory case, nice little zipper accessory case to keep things organized so I can put the manual in there afterwards. Only two cables, which is interesting. Number one is the AC charging cable, and you can see it doesn't have the AC-DC inverter with it, so the, that is built into the machine. That's nice. There's not an extra large piece of equipment that you have to take along with you. Just your power cable, and I'll show you how that operates in a minute. Now, this one is different, and this, I don't have another unit that operates like this. This is the solar charging cable that allows you to use solar charging for this unit. And it's different in that it has a MC4 connector on one end and an Anderson power pole connector on the other end. Again, I'll explain in a few minutes time why that exists. One more item, something you don't often see, I was going to call it a rain cover. I don't think it, well, you could use it as a rain cover. It is a waterproofed nylon material, but I think it's more of a dust and sun cover. So this would unfold and go right down over the unit so that you can keep the thing dust free and storage until you need it at that time. 
Okay, now I think what I'll do is bring the camera down so I can focus in on the unit. I'll give you the physical specifications as well as its performance specifications, and I'll talk about my experiences using it. All right, I'm going to go over the physical specifications for this unit quickly. Then I'm going to jump backwards and do the key features before getting into the performance specifications. And of course, all this information will be listed in the video description below this video. So right off of the top, the weight. This is a heavy unit, as I mentioned, 48.5 pounds or 22 kilograms. You can carry it around, but just not easily. There's a lot of weight to this unit without question. Now, dimensions wise, in this direction, across the top, 15.4 inches, 392 millimeters. Depth from front to back, 10.9 inches, 279 millimeters. From the bottom to the top, including the grab bars, 12.7 inches, 323 millimeters. Now, key features, and these this unit has a whole lot of those. Right off the top, it has a 2000 watt pure sine wave AC inverter. So you can power any appliance up to and including 2000 watts that requires that much energy. However, on top of that, it does have a surge capacity of 4,000 watts. And I think that's really good for a unit of this type because a lot of the larger appliances, especially anything that is motorized, requires a surge capacity. It's running, cap running uh, wattage requirements are usually nowhere near as high as its startup. So for instance, my forced hot air furnace does have motors on the blower as well as the fuel pump. So it does take more more power to get the furnace up and running than it does to keep running. And that's true of most appliances and power tools that have motors of some type in it. So having a 4,000 watt surge capacity is a great access to a unit type like this. And as I mentioned earlier, it has just under 2,000 watt hour storage capacity, 1,997 watt hours. That's not insignificant. That's a lot of storage inside of this this unit and that is stored inside of LifePo4 or lithium iron phosphate batteries rated to a 3500 plus life cycles, that's full charge life cycles, before the capacity drops to 80 or 85% of its original strength. It does have all the things that you would expect, a battery management system, overcharge, undercharge, max, maximum power point tracking that you would expect of any good quality unit. Of interest, it has four ways of being recharged. We'll talk more about those in a few minutes, but you can use AC, of course. You can use solar. You can use the cigar or cigarette lighter, as or cigar lighter is how they refer to it in the literature for this one. And you can do AC plus solar, and that's kind of neat. That's where you get the rapid charge times. You can fully charge this unit if you're using AC and solar to the maximum capacity of solar that this will take and get a one. 0.5 hour charge time. That's that's really quite amazing. Now, it, again, it does take that two sources of charging to get the, the unit charged up that fast, but to recharge a 2000 watt battery in an hour and a half is very, very impressive. So it does have a UPS function as well. So they refer to it as a 24 seven UPS home backup. So, you know, if you have devices that you have to have running at all times, such as, well, maybe it's your computer, certainly if it's your CPAP machine, this will flip on to battery capacity at the moment's notice when just microseconds. And I did test that on my computer where I just literally uh, run the AC in, ran this to the computer, and then just unplugged the AC to see what would happen. Not even a flicker. It just instantly, at least no discernible, uh, a pause at all before it ran and the computer did not turn off, which is of course what you want. This has 16 outputs from multiple devices at the same time. And I'll share those all with you in a minute. 
And again, not insignificant. It has a five year warranty. All right, I brought the focus in on the camera a little closer so that you could see some of the detail for this unit and I can give you a visual tour of the input and output ports on it. So let's start with the input ports. So this will be the left side of the unit facing it from the front and this is where the input uh, occurs. So there's a flap down here on the side if I can get my fingernails under it. You can see this is where the AC cable is going to input to the charging device inside of it. But right next to it, you can see the Anderson power pole connector. So that's where that cable comes in that I showed you in the opening. That was both an Anderson power pole on one end and MC4 on the other end. So this is where you would hook up the solar panel through using that cable here. And again, as I mentioned before, you can do simultaneous dual charging through both of these ports at the same time, leading to that rapid recharge time. The other thing here is there is a circuit breaker button here. If for whatever reason the unit were to stop charging, uh, you could unplug, reset the unit and start all over again. Now I'm going to flip you all the way around to the other side. So this is the right hand side when you're facing the unit. Get my fingernail under the lip there. Hopefully that's showing up. Six, yes, six AC outputs, 110 volt. 50 or 60 hertz, it's settable, depending on what you use and need, of 2,000 watts of uh, pure sine wave. And I mentioned it does have that peak surge capacity of 4,000 watts. All right, let's flip around to the front. So on the front, I'm trying to lean over and make sure I can find where I'm going to be pointing at. Oh, here in the central, you can see it's gridded off in white here. We have the USB-A outputs for 2.4 volt uh, USB-A outputs and two 18 watt max outputs as well. So those would be the QC3 uh, outputs. It also has two USB-C outputs port ports, both at 100 watt max uh, outputs. So there is a DC, 12 volt DC, as you would expect. That seems to be standard on all of these units. But what's really interesting it is that it has, in addition, right next to it, is this one here. Let's get the op thing opened up so you can see it. And this is an XT60 port. Now, what's so special about that is that this will put out 12 volts, but at 25 amps, whereas the car output will only put out 10 amps, this will put out 25 amps. And I found that significant because I did have a viewer comment on one of my other units that he was disappointed that the output was uh, capped at 10 amps because he had devices that required a much higher amperage. Well, this is definitely going to cover it at 25 amps. That's a lot of power going out of the unit through this port. And of course, there's two 5521 uh, outputs as well here, also 12 volt, 10 amps. Now, there is, and I'm not going to blind you by showing it to you, but you can see here there is an LED light here with SOS function. So it's, it seems to be almost a requirement on units. And I didn't think it had much benefit. Um, I'm still not absolutely convinced. I find that it's nice to be able to quickly turn the light on so that you can plug things into this unit. But then it, really it's hard to see looking at the front of this unit if that light is turned on. So there is some benefit. It. I don't know that most people use it. Most people have flashlights for that type and event anyway. All right, I just want to demonstrate for you both the operation of this unit as well as the display. Now, you may be able to hear a fan running in the background. It is not this unit. When the fan does kick on on this unit, it's very, very quiet, impressively quiet considering how much energy is running through it. In fact, the fan that you can hear is on another power bank that I'm charging using this power bank, and it's quite a bit more noisy. Hopefully, it's not disturbing our recording of this video. So uh, once again, there's maybe one thing that I did not point out a minute ago, and that is with each of these output section, the DC here, the DC here, and the AC down on this side, they each have their independent on off buttons for starting their power up. And of course, there's an overall power button right here above the little LED lamp. Now that's especially beneficial, of course, if you have AC devices plugged into this, 
if you're not using the AC to power anything else or to charge anything else up, then you don't want to have the inverter turned on for that because there are, is parasitic drain. So just leaving it on without any load will drain some off of your battery. So again, don't leave that on if you have no need for the AC power at this time. So there are on off buttons. Now let's go into the display. So the display is very complete in my mind. I, I like everything I see. I like the fact that it is in colors to help differentiate mostly blue of course so right in the center you can see the power status of this battery and you can see i'm running about i can't quite make it out i believe it says 85 percent right now and that's displayed both graphically in the segmented circle as well as numerically in the center of that on this side of the unit it's showing the time remaining to reach 100 percent so you can see we're below 20 minutes or around 20 minutes and this unit will be charged fully charged to 100 percent at the same time i have an output over here showing what is going into that other power bank that i'm charging so it's nice that i can show the input the output how much battery is left in or how much power is left in the storage of this battery and how long it would take to reach full capacity of 100%. Now, if I plugged in even more DC units either here or over here, that would show uh, in the total of the output, but you would see a DC light come on. So it's a very well thought out display. Everything is there that I would need to see to understand what's going on with this unit. All right, quickly, I want to go over my experiences in testing this unit around home here for the last month or so. So right off the top, I did mention this earlier on in the video, is I wanted to know whether or not I could power my furnace with this. So again, I have an oil-fired forced hot air furnace. So it's not a exceptionally power hungry. In fact, it's a very efficient furnace. But uh, I wanted to test because that's one of the things I was not able to do so far with any of the other units units that I have tested. Now, I just want to point out that my furnace, when it was installed a number of years ago now, it came with a transfer switch. And that is something that you need to have installed on your furnace if you're going to use any type of an external power source, whether it is a battery power station like this or a generator of any type. You need to have that transfer switch installed. It's worth doing if you are concerned about having access to power during a, down, a grid down or power failure situation which seems to be happening more and more either from winter storms or uh, summer hurricanes and any number of other reasons. Okay, so I did that testing and there was no hesitation. Again, it's not an especially power hungry unit, my furnace that is, but it does require a fair amount of surge to get it up and running and to get steady state. And this unit was well able to do that. Other things that I tested, of course, were my fridge and my freezer and my microwave and my coffee maker and a number of other power tools that I had that are rather power hungry and other batteries would not power them. So I was very, very pleased with how well this unit worked. Now, what do I really like about this unit? One, besides the fact that it will power all those things that I couldn't power before is the rapid charge time. I did get out and do some solar charge and unfortunately I didn't capture that video for you, but it's great to be able to put solar power into this at a max capacity. I believe it is 500 watts. So you'll have to combine in certain uh, ways, a couple of different panels to get to 500 watts. I'll correct that if I'm not, uh, or I'll make sure I annotate if I'm not correct on that, but it's up to 500 watts input from solar to maximize the input there. And if you combine that with AC at the same time, you're going to have this unit up and running to full capacity within an hour and a half. Really very, very impressive indeed. So it has a number of good pros going for it. Now, here's the thing. This is not a con. It's just an observation that I can't quite explain. When I was offered this unit, I did a little pre-research before accepting it. And what I found is that there are a number of units on the market right name that look identical to this, 
under different brand names. I'm not sure what that's all about. I expect that, you know, they may be specking out, each company like Afri may be specking out to the same manufacturer to produce units for them. But, uh, I, you know, I don't think it's a matter of taking the same unit and rebranding it. It could be. Maybe someone has some more information on that. But that's also reflected in the manual that came with this. The manual has no reference to the brand Afri in it. Now, that's neither a negative. Uh, that's not necessarily a negative. It's just something I want to point out that this is for its size a very generic type of battery. It just happens to have a whole lot of features that you're looking for in a large size unit like this. Okay, I think I've said enough. As I mentioned before, all the specifications and all the other information I have for this unit, including links to where you can take a closer look at it, will be in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions regarding the AFRI 2000 watt portable power station, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.